Hey, hello everybody. Hello, people joining us. Hello, Kim Fleming. Hi. We have a very special guest today. Many of you know Kim Fleming as an agent at Lilla Rogers Studio, my art agency. Welcome to everyone. Type in the chat where you are. We love to see who's joining us and where you are. Um, Kim is both an agent, four years been with the agency, and before that worked at Hasbro and so forth. She's illustrated a dozen picture books. So she is also an illustrator. And just about, what, a month and a half ago, Kim, we decided to take you on yeah. for representation, like um, which we are thrilled about. Her work is just gorgeous. We're very excited about it. And uh, so we've got lots to share today. We'll, we'll be doing a giveaway. We'll be looking at her work. And we get to talk to someone who has two jobs as an illustrator and as an agent. And I know some of you do that as well, do two things at once. So um, should be interesting. Let me tell you about Kim. And do type in where you are. Love to see that. Um, Kim grew up in Montreal, Canada. She's bilingual, French, English, studied art near Seattle, Washington, USA, and started illustrating picture books while she was in Melbourne, as she says, Melbourne, Australia, yeah. and now calls Providence, Rhode Island, her home. She did a stint at Hasbro, the toy major toy company, by the way. Her illustrations can be found mainly in over a dozen picture books, as I said, and has also illustrated animated children's games, rubber stamps, magazines, and newspapers. She uses a blend of watercolor textures, hand-carved stamps that obviously she makes herself, dig and digital magic to create multi-layered textural illustrations. She especially enjoys portraying children from all different racial backgrounds, and she reckons she has the best job in the world. Hello, Lydia and Raquel best and Riley. Jobs. Best two jobs in the world, really. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hello, Ruth and uh, Laura and Andrea and Jennifer, Elizabeth. So good to see everybody. We're so happy that you're all here. So I know, Kim, I know what everybody's wondering. How the heck are you an <laughs> illustrator and an agent at one of the busiest illustration agents with these fabulous artists? And I know you are um, top-notch, ultra-professional, give 110% to the agency, how do you do that and also illustrate? How do you manage your time? Um, basically, I don't sleep. No, that's not true. I do sleep a little bit, um, but I don't watch TV. I have to say that is one of the things where, you know, a lot of people spend their evenings doing that. I spend my evenings working. So mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, you know, I try to take a couple nights off here and there, but um, especially when I'm illustrating a book, which, um, you know, anyone who's, who's done that knows how much work it is. Um, I basically work every night. So I work during the day as agent, and then I have my secret, uh, you know, alter ego who works at night as an illustrator. And, you know, I, I mix that up a little bit. Um, the agency has, you know, there are certain tasks I need to do that are very time sensitive. So I always do those first. And then there are other tasks which I can do sort of any time of night, you know, like updating the website or um, um, putting together newsletters, that sort of thing. So um, when I'm illustrating a book, I do try to have some daytime time where I'm illustrating. Otherwise, I don't get to it until, you know, nine o'clock at night when I'm exhausted. And it's, it's not always yeah. easy to be creative when you're exhausted. So, um, you know, I, I switch it up, but pretty much my entire life, I've always freelanced. I've always had um, mm -hmm. a multitude of projects going and, um, you know, I've gotten good at being organized. And I do have that side of my brain that's, you know, I have the creative side that I tap into when I'm illustrating, but then I have the other side, which is very 
organized and, you know, I have my priority lists. I'm a big list maker. So I always know, okay, I need to get this done first and then I get that done. So I'm not, I'm not wasting time in between things thinking, okay, what should I be doing now? Like I always, I know what I should be doing all the time. So, um, you know, I'm able to do the agenting and, and the illustration in tandem and Beautiful. they feed each other so much, you know, like oh, so. I learned so much from the agency that, that helps my illustration. And then being an illustrator, I'm, be, I'm able to speak that language for the illustrators we represent when I'm negotiating jobs for them. So, you know, they both really feed each other and help each other. Okay. Wow. Let's unpack that. <laughs> Sorry. Of all, <laughs> Bit of a ramble. People, no, no, no ramble. That was beautiful. Um, watching, binge watching shows. How many hours is that a day, a night, a week? And Kim just gave you gold. It's so true. You know, what you spend time on is what you value. You want a great career as a binge watcher? or a great career as an illustrator. So it really is what you spend time on 100%. That's number one. Thank you for that tip. Number two, how does, um, plus your Capricorn, so, you know, you have that aspect. What, is there any particular uh, software you use for lists or do you just use a Word doc or paper and pencil? Mostly what paper and pencil, um, okay. just because it's easy to grab, you know, like if I think of something, uh, I have, you know, a multitude of, of mm -hmm. different um, pads lying around that I'll just scribble something down um, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very scared I'm going to forget something. So I'm, I've right. got lists all over the house. Um, and then I'll usually, you know, I'll sit down at a certain point and organize everything and go, okay, you know, how do I, how do I need to get this done? So yeah, yeah. Well, you do an amazing, you know, you're like amazing for me too to just help me with all the various projects we get ourselves into, like the residency and the retreat and the and the book retreat and the re residency and all the different projects we do and the newsletters we do together and so many things. It's just really in, in, invaluable. Um so you said that they the both both of those inform each other how does you being an illustrator of picture books help you as an agent when you're talking to a client or an artist or negotiating a job you want to get can you think of an example yeah i think um i think basically because i can put my illustrator hat on and say if i was offered this job what would i want to know you know so i know the right questions to ask um, I can also get into the technical details if I have to of, you know, what file formats do you need or da da da, you know, um, what's your printing process or how does the, how does the illustration need to be supplied, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, I think more often than not, it's, it's just knowing what questions to ask and getting all the answers up front for the illustrators and that, you know, that saves time. Um, it gives the illustrator a better understanding of what's being asked of them and whether they want to take on the project or not. Love it. Love it. You know, I'm thinking, Dewey, I was an illustrator when I started the agency. <laughs> and Sorry. you're reminding me, yes, I could say, okay, is this, now I'm going way back in time, is it black and white or color? Because newspapers were often black and white, rarely color. A lot of magazine illustrations, because color was so much more expensive. It, it wasn't digital yet, in many cases, just beginning you know, uh, the, the specs, the sizes, I would sometimes say, um, if they didn't have a big budget for a magazine, but they were doing a full page and wanted some icons too, and I knew that it was a good amount for a full page, but not great for additional little spot icons. So I'd say, can you use pullouts from the illustration if the artist puts a lot in there and because I, I knew the illustrator might be like, mm, I need more money for those icons and the client didn't have it. So solving problems like that. Um, yeah. You remind me. Yeah. I was an illustrator when I was an agent and I, I bootstrapped the agency with my illustration work. If you could believe that, because that was so busy until uh, my illustrators were busy. And then I tapered and had my second child and, the rest is, and I have not looked back. I did love being an illustrator. It's just that when you get that call for a gig, 
you've won the lottery every time and somebody's yeah. paying you to make like a piece of art on some topic you never even thought of. Right. I was actually just talking to some illustrator friends about this yesterday, about how with each new project, you get to learn something completely new. Mm -hmm. You know, you get to learn um, about maybe there's a particular subject matter of the, of the book, but um, also it might just be, you know, a character from a different background that you've never drawn before. You get to research, you know, what, what exactly is their skin tone like? What is their dress? What, what would their hairstyle be? All these sort of things. Um, it's really, it keeps you, it keeps you excited and engaged to have Absolutely. that variety. Yeah, It does. It's very lively. It's, it's a great career. It's wonderful. Okay. Let's see. And do put your questions in the Q and A at the down there. And as I said, we're going to have a giveaway and we're going to look at Kim's work really soon. Um, so I know people are probably wondering, how do you get started on a book? How do you, and we can tie it into this. So we just took you on a little over a month or so. Uh, have, have we gotten you any jobs yet? <laughs> Um, actually, my first my first job is uh, sort of being confirmed pretty much as we speak. I think uh, it's not I haven't gotten the book yet, but it's a it's a sample for a potential book. So that's very exciting. Um, it's always nice to have the next project on the horizon. I'm working on a book at the moment for um, Scholastic, which has been lots of fun. It's been an amazing mm -hmm. book to work on. Um, and that will finish at the end of this month. So it's always nice to, to sort Perfect of have timing. Perfect yeah. timing. Perfect timing. Okay. Um, um, sorry, what was the previous question? Let me pull that up. I was just getting your um, posy thingy out, PDF. Um, oh yeah, how do you get started on a book? Oh, yeah, that's right. So um, for me, I mean, the first, the first um, entry point to the book is obviously the manuscript. So um, I love it when I get a manuscript and I get to sit down and read it for the first time. I always, you know, make sure I'm in a space where I'm not going to be disturbed. Um, I like to print it out if I can to and read it on paper as opposed to uh, digitally on the computer because uh, that way I can make little notes because usually for me that's when those first ideas just really start to burst. You know, I, I start to see compositions right away in my head. Sometimes I'll, I'll scribble down little thumbnails um, too. So um, that really is the first spark for me. And that's also how I know if I want to accept a job or not is if I read the manuscript and I get those little sparkles, you know, if I read a manuscript and I'm like, mm, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about this, then, you know, that might be something I pass on. Um, but, you know, when I get that, that excited feeling, that's when I know, okay, this, this is a good project for me. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's how I get started. And then, Usually what happens is the um, client likes to see a character sketch first. So I would normally do that first and we would normally have a discussion about, you know, what age is the character, what ethnicity, that sort of thing. So I have a few guidelines to get started. Um, so I might do like a turnaround of the character. So um, like a front view, a side view and a three quarter view. Um, and, you know, depending on the book that might be for multiple characters and um, and then I can go forward and start doing, I usually start with thumbnails. So I usually start quite small, you know, just a couple of inches. Um, for the spread or for the character? For, uh, so for the, for the spread, yeah, when I'm doing thumbnails of the, the pages, mm -hmm. I start quite small and I just, it's sort of just like a brain dump at first, you know, and I'm trying out all sorts of different things and because they're that big, they take about, you know, 10 seconds to do. So, you know, for each spread, I might do 10 to 12, 10 to 15 thumbnails and sort of- Really? Yeah, yeah, because oh. you know, it only take, it, you know, it doesn't take that long to do that much when they're that small. And they're just little scribbles. They're probably not even anything anyone else would understand, but it's just for me to know, okay, like the main character would be here and it's a close up, or um, it'd be three vignettes or, you know, however I need the, the pacing to be on that page. Um, so yeah, so that's how I get started. 
And then it just, it just sort of grows from there. I'll, you know, choose the thumbnail that I feel is working the best. And then I'll um, start to illustrate it bigger and bigger, adding more and more details each time. That's, isn't she so good at giving specificity? Specific? <laughs> this is really good stuff. Um, so how, uh, who asked that? Lydia asked, how long does a book typically take? Um, so with a, a full-time job, um, a book takes, you know, if I have six months for a 32 page book, then that's good. Um, if I was just like, if I was just illustrating, then, you know, I could do it in, in much less. I could probably do it in three, three months would be comfortable three to four months. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, typically about six months. Yeah. That's nice too, because it gives you time to settle in and, and also, you you can work on a piece and have a little time to get away from it, pause for a few days, look back and so forth. Yeah, it's that's nice. What, that's what I'm trying to do with the current book I'm working on. I always try and end, like finish all the illustrations just a little bit early and give myself a couple of days so I can step away from it. And then I can come back and look at everything as a whole. Um, because, you know, you when you're illustrating something, you get so into what you're doing and mm -hmm you know, you're working on one particular illustration, then you go to the next one and the next one, but you don't throughout the process really have the time to step back and look at everything as, as a book, as a full book. So I like to give myself a bit of time at the end of a project to be able to do that. And let's unpack that people. <laughs> she finishes well before deadline to give herself time. When I was an illustrator, same thing. I just, I remember I did a piece and I, right before the FedEx deadline, it's how things were then, it was before scanners. And I thought, which by the way, we thought that was really cool that FedEx come and pick up your art. That was cool back then or messenger when I was in New York, you know? So, um, so I would be like, dang, if I just had like another hour, I could have really, really tweaked it. I'm like, well, that's dumb. I could just stop, like, be done, start an hour, a, little, a few hours earlier. And, um, oh, Jen says, we send it to the airport in a cab back in the day. Yeah. You know, it's um, the more time you have to respect your process and to luxuriate in the process. Some people say, oh, I do well under pressure. Mm, I don't, you may disagree with me, you're welcome to, but I don't think that's how you do great work. I don't think you can do great work when you have no time to change your mind or reroute or go in a different direction or step back. I don't think you, you will be good, but first of all, you won't achieve super excellence and you will not, and you will burn out. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a career running on adrenaline. Right. Opinion. Right. And look, I mean, sometimes it's not possible, you know, sometimes you True. have a deadline for something and you just, you can't build that time in and you just have to do what right. you can with what you're given. But um, right. you know, if you're able to build that into your schedule, which, you know, with picture books, which are sort of a longer schedule, typically um, it's a bit easier to do. For me, I tend to, I, I tend to really freak out at the beginning of a project. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to get this done. Oh my gosh, how am I going to? fit everything in in my life and my child and you know all this stuff and so I'll, I'll work really hard at the beginning of a project and and get ahead and then so I can sort of cruise to the end so I do like the the opposite of procrastination whatever that is <laughs> I used to sometimes think I can't draw that in the beginning there's no I don't know how to draw that there's no way but I always figured it out persistence you just stay persistence okay um Tell us about Storyteller Summer Camp. Oh, yeah. Um, so Storyteller Summer Camp is a, an Instagram challenge that I started up with um, Tamisha Anthony, who all the math students will know from her amazing course. And with another, Black History. Black History. And another lovely math student, Jamie, uh, Gemma Jamie Skidmore, uh, who I'm sure some of you know as well. Um, so this, this eventuated because at the beginning of the year, I just sort of put it out on Instagram that um, I was really looking 
to just make more connections with illustrators. I feel like, you know, during the pandemic, um, so many things sort of fell away. I had a critique group that we used to meet in person once a week and that sort of stopped. And oh. you know, a lot of the little events that we, you know, I would try to get to semi-regularly just stopped and all of a sudden, you know, we didn't have that, um, that community anymore. And online Instagram became sort of more of that community. So I, I put it out there that, um, you know, I really was interested in making more connections. And Demma got in touch with me and she said, well, why don't we start up an Instagram challenge? And it just was perfect. And we got Tamisha on board as well. So it's a, um, it's a challenge we've been running over the three months of the summer, so June, July, August. Mm -hmm. and it's specifically for picture book illustrators. So we wanted to create uh, a challenge where illustrators could create three sequential pieces of art for their portfolio, because that's something that art directors look for, that you can illustrate a character consistently, um, and it can show your storytelling. Uh, your storytelling ability. And so we created this challenge where it's like a, a Mad Libs challenge. So we sort of, we gave a structure of what each prompt is for each month, but then people could fill it in, in the way they wanted. So they could fill in what type of character it was. They could fill in what the environment was, but we gave them this structure of, okay, this is basically what's happening in your. So, so how do people participate in that? Uh, so it's an Instagram challenge. So people would just, you know, What's do the hashtag a storyteller summer camp, storyteller yeah. summer camp hashtag. Okay, good. If somebody wants to put that in the chat. That's wonderful. How yeah. about we look at your work? But first of all, Kim, you haven't even seen these yet. We got a few samples in from the studio. Um, the, yesterday, we got this oh, gorgeous. See the texture on that? Great. Kendra Binney for Aqu Aqua Rupella. And look, it has a, uh, how beautiful. Oh my God. Are there extras? Can I have one? There's, <laughs> there's three total. And uh, you might want to give, you, well, probably you can have one. And then I thought one when you go to New York, when you see publishers. Kim's going to see publishers in New York in, a few weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. In two weeks I'll be there. I'm really and excited. she has like such a great list of publishers she's gonna see and made a beautiful blur book of our artists' work. But also she's going to give things away to them. And so we got these. You're gonna love giving these away. Oh, these oh, are things. Oh, that's great. Aren't these gorgeous? Oh wow, they came out so well. So well. Let me go in order. So there's these little itty bitty ones. Oh, those are so cute. Oh my gosh. Oops. So good to see them in person. I mean, yeah. she just, you know, she just has such a fabulous style. So sweet. Oh, that's a repeat that's bigger. Look at it, she got a whole series. Am I going too fast or too slow? No, oh, that's good. They did a whole collection with her. They Unbelievable. And even the back is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've got her logo on there and everything. Yeah, and they, look at this one. I mean, she's just so quirky and eccentric. Yeah. Love it. Million. Um, yeah, they so did. You have a bunch of those to give out. Fantastic. She did a lot of work. And two more, boom, boom. So, and we got in a, a picture book. <clears throat> um, I think Kendra or Osa. Um, so there's a few of the, I have a whole pile for you for New York. So depends what you can carry. Do you want that little wheelie? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Which one is more stylish? <laughs> okay. Um, so why don't we look at your uh, PDF, shall we? Let's. Okay, let's go. And I see that there's some questions in the Q and A. Oh, I sure. the wrong date, but anyway, that's okay. I just wanted to say thank you for everyone to everyone for showing up today after we had to reschedule and everything. Oh yeah, 
you still coming today. So thank you for being here. Yes, it was and crazy. We and we, we had a long link this morning. So yeah, what else could possibly go wrong? Oh my God. I had to have foot surgery Friday, so we had to cancel. Yeah. Is that nuts? No. I'm f perfectly, I'm fine. I, it was an accident. Um, so, and then the AC went out. What? Okay, but here we are in a new pretty location. So here we are with Kim. This is the right PDF, right? Did you say this? That's the right PDF. I just didn't update this graphic. That's all. Oh, oh, okay. This has the wrong date on it. That's all. Oh, oh that's all right. We're all here now. Yes. Okay. Um, Oh, it said chat was disabled. I guess it's enabled now. Uh, yes. I love this. This is one of your most recent pieces, isn't it? So, so these are my pieces for a storyteller summer camp. So these are the three pieces that I did over the summer. Um, and our, these are the prompts that we gave to everyone. I haven't even shown the third one there yet. So sneak peek to everybody who's here today. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so this is this is what I came up with. I really wanted to target the board book market. I'm really excited to get some board yeah. books. So I really wanted the, um, you know, I, I don't use a lot of white in my work a lot, um, but so I really wanted to try to do that this time and to have the shapes just be really simple and the, the characters, um, you know, very simple, but still engaged, so. Yeah, well, I love the colors. I really do. They're very soft. They're very, it's an, an, a nice addition to your portfolio. And I also, um, I, I love the softness here. Can you see where I'm pointing? Yep. Yep. I love that softness and the textures you have. And the character is really, I mean, look at this super adorable. I love it. It's a great direction. Thank you. Okay. I'm excited about it. Yes. Okay. Tell us about this. So this is part of a series of um, uh, fairy tale book covers that I did. Uh, this is back in 2020, actually. Uh, I wanted to do fairy tales that had protagonists of different uh, different backgrounds, so not just your typical, you know white Hansel and Gretel type thing. So I did an, an Indian Rapunzel, uh, mm -hmm. which I had a lot of fun with. And um, this was sort of my way of, um, this was, you know, pandemic had started and George Floyd and everything. And I was like, what, what can I do there? You know, what can me as one person do? And I was like, okay, well, this is my voice. I want to try and, um, you know, show show kids that okay, there's something different out there. It's not just your your typical um, white protagonist in a fairy tale. Like right. it can be everyone, and um, you know, it can all be appreciated in that way. So yeah, fantastic. The braid is incredible, and the lettering is just so wonderful, and it it speaks to your own heritage. Right, exactly. Yeah, I'm I'm half Indian, so um, this was a, a very special one for me to do. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Love. So you know I love this. Another one as part of the series. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite ones too. Um, so yeah, again, you know, I wanted to show a girl in a hijab and I did another one I don't think I have it in the pdf which is uh it's Jack and the Beanstalk and it's a little you know little black boy with a little afro and you know I just wanted to show all different all different yeah. back and that was a few years ago I mean now we see it all the time but that this was you know a good two and a half years ago three years yeah. ago yeah. something like that yeah I mean is it the cutest hijab you've ever seen in your life <laughs> It's just like as big as she is. It's so adorable. And her eyes in the red. And it's it's the appropriate amount of showing concern with her not being like terrified because it is for two to five year old children. It's really wonderful. I love this perspective. I love the mood. I love the depth. 
one of the things when I work with some artists is they, I want you all to hear this. When you do your rough, your little thumbnail, and maybe what is it like as big as an index card? Yeah, can be the even. Prop, or smaller, a lot of people will don't realize how much room you have to show a scene with depth. Get back in there as you, when I taught middle school kids in the seventies, as you go up the page, you're going farther away and everything gets littler and grayed out. This is atmospheric perspective, you see? So things are faded as you go up. So really use that page to create a story, to create a, an environment, and you've done it beautifully. But look how the girl pops by color, by placement. Beautiful. Okay. Love her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I love her. Tell us about this one. And this one was just a personal piece that just sort of jumped out of me. It was nothing in particular, no reason, uh, you know, no brief I was filling out. It was just this image that that came to me one day and um, I had to had to illustrate it. So and I love the hair as big as her head. Her <laughs> and tell me about these purple plants are really, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe I had seen, oh, and I'm not going to remember it now. Um, I saw the cover of a book that it'll it'll come back to me that this illustrator had done, where, um, or maybe someone will know in the chat. It's this child, and most of the background. So the background is sort of white, but then there's there are these flowers that are just sort of um, coming in on the on the character and just filling the page with flowers and I think I think that really struck me and I liked the idea of a character being sort of in this forest of flowers or forest of sort of magical plants Beautiful. okay I know what that's this is from <laughs> tell us about this so this is for make art that sells um one of her two years ago or, or last year, I guess, 2021, maybe. Um, so it's a story written by Zoe Tucker about Cleopatra and her um, very grumpy cat, who I had a lot of fun doing because it's modeled after my very grumpy cat. Um, and this was just so much fun to do. There are a couple of pieces that I did um, during the class. I can't remember if they're all in here. Um, but it was so fun to research all the hieroglyphics and the um, the dress of the time. And a lot of these, um, you can see some of the patterns in here, like the pattern in the, um, the sort of drape on the, yeah, on the right hand side. So those are all um, stamps that I carved by hand. I wish I had one to show you, but um, they're sort of packed away. Um, so they're like rubber blocks that I, I carved by hand and then stamp them and then I scan them in and then manipulate them in Photoshop. So all the little patterns you see were all all done by hand. Um, mm. in that way. So yeah, it was super fun. It's great. I mean, you know, such a modernized Cleopatra and her, her nail polish and her outfit and the earrings to match the pink lipstick. It's modernized and she's cool and has so much attitude. Mm -hmm. It's great. Okay. And here we have interior spreads. Tell us about these. Right. So these were these were also for the class, obviously. Um, I think the first, the top one was actually uh, part of the character poses I did, and then I turned it into a full spread. And I had a lot of fun doing that that cat tree thing, <laughs> which is sort oh, of fantastic. also based on my cat's cat tree, but um, turned into a, uh, an Egyptian cat fortress. Yeah, um, that's great. And then the bottom one was the, um, the, the full scene spread um, that we do as part of the course. Uh, I really love really interesting lighting situations. So I knew this was the, the page I wanted to do with all the candlelight and the moonlight and um, I had a, had a lot of fun doing this one. Took so the, how you got that candlelight people, am I right? Didn't she? It's so glowy and 
got this nice sort of blur, but a good blur, not like a, a bad blur. And of the glow, it's just really, I I think this was in the review, wasn't it? Do you remember? I think so. Yeah. yeah I remember being, being blown away by it. So that was for illustrating children's book course that I teach. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is another um, just personal piece. I don't I don't know where these images come from. Sometimes they just it's just an idea that comes to me. But I, I sort of like, as you can probably tell, I like sort of fantastical um, pieces. So you know, illustrations that depict a bit of magic, a bit of a bit of the unreal or surreal coming into play with with like normal, uh, normal characters. And actually, there's there's one piece, I can't remember if it's in here or not, um, which is sort of like that, that I did of a boy riding a whale. And they're mm -hmm. underwater and everything. And um, that actually inspired the book that I'm working on right now for Scholastic. They saw that and they were like, oh, because the book is is very magical. It's all about um, different magical beasts or uh, different magical creatures. So, um, so uh -huh. it, it's, you know, it, it goes to show that what you put out there is what you get back. So, mm -hmm. you know, I put out all these pieces that have this very magical ethereal feel to them and then that's the kind of project I got offered um which is great because if, if you're putting out what you love then you're going to get offered what you love exactly you know you, I remember thinking well don't they know that I could do that no the art directors don't know unless you show them right. they and I thought well that's so literal you know I'm in my 20s you know in illustration school but it's it's true, and an agent can't know either. We don't know that you know you can do like this sort of watery. So here you've got very very painterly blobs that then morph into a realistic situation, which is just kind of cool. So you know now we see she can do that, for instance. Okay. Oh man, love the whale when I was talking about. So this is the I one did. that inspired my current book. Um, yeah. And you scale the little character on the big whale helps to show the enormity. Look at the relationship between the two of them by them looking at each other as Zoe's always talking about get your characters to connect. I love the how these aren't all over these little red fish aren't all over which I would find monotonous and boring but they're like a, a school a cluster a, a, a decorative motif at, in a sense. Right. Very beautiful. Okay, tell us about this. This one was for Folktale Week, um, which is mm. another Instagram challenge, which I always want to do and never seem to have time to do. Um, and I'm, I managed one <laughs> last year. Uh, I think I'm going to plan a bit better this year to try and do all of them. But um, mm. so this, uh, I can't remember what the actual challenge was. I think it was moon, maybe something like that, something to do with the moon. Um, so yeah, so that's how that's really nice. Okay, this little guy and, so and this, grandpa. Yeah, this again was for illustrating children's books. So this was this year, um, just back in May, not too long ago. Um, and again, a text by Zoe Tucker, uh, all about this uh, grandfather and his grandson, um, sort of, you know, teasing out their relationship and uh, about the grandson coming over to his house and, and going through all the incredible curiosities that he has in his home. Uh, so this is sort of, a, a well, it's a very different palette for me, definitely. Um, I tend to do very, very bright and saturated. So this was a lot more muted, but I wanted it to have that sort of dusty feeling of, you know, when you go into somewhere and it's, it's sort of nothing has been moved for five years and <laughs> you know it's got that layer of dust and the, the sunlight coming through and sort of um, you know kicking up all that dust when the, the little boy is is rummaging through stuff so um, that's what I wanted to achieve for for this piece. you totally you totally achieved it and how the colors are a little sepia here a little gray and a little vintagey and look at the control she has at getting these characters to pop because they are intense colors bright colors in other words intense 
doesn't necessarily mean hot pink or whatever. It means they're not muted colors. So she has the more vivid, bright colors here and more muted here, and then monochromatic or just a sort of a brown and sepia line quality, not black because that would be too strong. She needed to keep it held back. So it was there, but didn't get in the way of this. And you've got all a gramophone and an old phone and a this and a violin and that and the cat and vintage chair and so forth. So it tells the story. Yeah, so all the things that are in full color, those are the ones that are actually called out in the text and the rest of them are, are, the, are just held back to the background. Okay. Now this is another make art that sells um, piece. This was for character character play, I want to say. Um, mm -hmm. Puff and fluff. Yeah, that was character play. Um, so the the assignment was to create these two rabbit characters who go out on a little adventure in the desert. Um, so. This was a lot of fun too. And again, Beautiful. coming back to the bright colors on this one. <laughs> yeah. Now here you did the opposite, the bright colors in the background and the characters are a little more neutral with the hot pink there, but because they're in the foreground and because why do we see them right away? This strong vertical cuts against the horizontal. So that's another tool you can use. What a sweet little guy. You really mm -hmm. capture sweet little guys. Okay, I know what this is from. Tell us about this. I love, by the way, seeing you do a different, whole different kind of look. Why? Because the more different looks you have in your portfolio, assuming they're within your taste level and style, the greater range of, of, of jobs that one is up for mm -hmm. available to get assigned. So I was happy to see this. Right. Yeah. And also, you know, with this one and, and sort of with the previous one, I was sort of trying to skew it a little bit younger so it could be more applicable for, for the board book um, mm -hmm. or book industry. So this was also for Make Art That Sells. I think this was also character play, maybe one of the first uh, one of the first ones. Yeah. In the with Riley. Riley, yeah, yeah. Character play. I hope you're all signed up for my boot camp class, by the way, which is going on right now. It's really, really good. Just speaking of boot camp, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, look how she's got the three, even though it's a donut, it's sort of flat. She has a three quarter view and how she does that circle, the whole works as the nose really effectively really effectively and actually all of them but I, I just find here it it doesn't seem to distract I like it and this is I mean look at how she is the shine and the shading on the on the frosting of the donut really nice and the pretty little street scene yeah I mean that was definitely a challenge in this character design was where do you put the hole of the donut because it's like right. going right through his forehead or right so I've tried so many different things uh -huh. and this was what I found worked the best was having it as the nose because it's it's quite it's quite mm -hmm. difficult to have a hole in the middle of your character. Yeah, um, I mean it looks like it was effortless like you just oh yeah sure I, you just did this right away. It's it's nice isn't it good to hear everybody how she you know she had you're hearing persistence that she stuck with this the donut and and in pre in and earlier in this chat she's talked about times where she stuck with things to get to a good point and i think if that's one thing i want all of you to really harness and embrace be stubborn be willful be persistent with focus with knowing what your goal is, not for the wrong things, but you know, for your goals, for your career goals. Okay. Yeah. I don't think you can be successful in publishing without persistence. It really mm -hmm. is. It's a long game. It's, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you think you're going to achieve your goals in the next, you know, all of your goals in the next six months, like it's, it's not going to happen. It's, you really need to right. be we really need to be in it for the long run and to be looking at it that way. 
um, when you're when you're producing art because um, you know we're, we all get rejections, we all get disappointed, we mm -hmm. all have to pick ourselves up and keep going on. So um, mm -hmm. if you can do that and you can keep going and keep being happy with what you're doing and realize that okay, this is just the stage I'm at now and I'm going to get better and better. Um, and you're going to get to where you want to go eventually, then you'll, you'll get there. You'll be successful. And I mean, I've seen your work at better and better too, over the years with just, you know, staying with it. And, and it's just getting like, boom, 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 just keeps getting better and better. This is such a great example of showing interaction between two characters, which is a great place Great thing to have in a portfolio. Okay. I love this piece. You know, it's one of my favorites. Thank you. Tell us about this. Um, this was uh, initially done as a, um, a like vote piece. Uh, so just before the election, uh, you know, I just wanted to put something out on, onto social media about, you know, please everybody go vote. So it, originally everyone was holding up signs that said vote and like all the, where it says thank you. And there's a little rainbow on the window. You know, it was all about voting. Um, vote by mail, vote by mail. Oh, my mail, by mail or whatever way uh, they were needed to. So okay. uh, encouraging people to, to go vote in the election. Um, mm. so, so that's how it started. Um, but then I just, I modified it to be a bit of a, a happier children's, <laughs> children's piece. I think that's so, a good children's uh, piece to have vote. You know, it's, 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 it's your obligation as a citizen to vote. It's your obligation. Right. Um, yeah and everybody you get out there and vote for the midterms yeah and That's again i wanted to show all different cultures um so you know all different all different backgrounds um rbg even worked her way in here my dad is in here i'm in here <laughs> there's like uh, all sorts uh -huh. of different characters work their way in here so <laughs> and the more you bring in what matters to you, the more it comes through in your work, the more you care, the more you're doing your art for yourself and your taste level and your passion, it'll appeal to more people. If you try to do art to appeal to more people, it won't generally have that magic. You can disagree with me, but it. I have found in my own career when I'm super passionate about anything that I do, those are the most successful businesses or courses or art or writing, all the various things I do. It's very true. So do think about, as Kim said, this was meaningful to her. She put in family characters and, and RGB and people that she admired in the thing. So great. Okay. And here we have these squares. Tell us about this. Um, so this is an advent calendar that I did. Mm. I've, I've tortured myself by doing advent calendars every December for a couple of years. <laughs> Last year, I don't think I did one. But um, yeah, for some reason, I decided that would be a good idea. So I totally stressed myself out trying to do one per day for the um, the month of December. And I really, I really liked this one though. Um, I just want to say I really planned this one out before I started. So it's not, um, it's not, you know, just coincidence that the colors are all placed where they are. I worked out what the background was going to be and what the character color was going to be before I, I went ahead and did any of them. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it was very uh, sort of meticulously planned before I did it. Um, but I had had so much fun doing it. I mean, I think drawing cute care, drawing cute animal characters is probably one of my favorite things to do. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. I, I like that you have a little menorah on the 18th. That's nice. Mm -hmm. And there we go. Oh, that was really wonderful. That was wonderful. How great was that? How wonderful to see. Um, we have a giveaway. Yes. Shall we do that? Yeah. Oh, let's first do some questiones. Okay. okay yeah. Let's let's go look at the Q and A. Um. Why don't you you go ahead and read them and go through them? 
Okay. Um, so Raquel Russo, hi Raquel. She says, Kim, you're an inspiration for all of us. Thank you. That's very sweet. Mm -hmm. um, do you, whoops, just jumped up. Do you have oh, any sure. tips or advice about living the superhero life, aka working full time by day and illustrating few minutes by night? Um, just to take care of yourself uh, because it can be, it can be taxing. Um, for me, I, uh, so I have a son who's 10 and for me, I will put him to bed and I'll almost always fall asleep with him <laughs> at bedtime. And which, you know, at first I was sort of angry at myself for doing that. I was like, no, I should be at working. But I found that my body's now used to it. And it's like a little power nap at about mm -hmm. So I'll put him to bed, I'll have a little nap, and then I'll wake up and I have a lot more energy after this little mm -hmm. power nap. So I think, yeah, I think it's just being good to yourself, um, knowing, knowing what your limits are, knowing when maybe sometimes you need to not work at night, you need to have a night off, or you need to have a day off, or, you know, whatever it is you need to do to recharge and um, be able to come to both of your lives, um, you know, with energy and, um, and being engaged with both of those because yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, I think our culture is very, um, it's very attuned to um, working a lot uh, right. and sometimes too much. And, it, and it's almost glorified sometimes, you know, you ask someone how they are and they say, oh, I'm so busy. Um, and, and that's almost a good thing. Like if someone said, oh, I'm just, you know, I've just been lying around all day having a, a lovely day, you'd be like, well, what, are you, what are you doing with yourself? Don't you have goals? You know, but <laughs> um, we, so it, it's almost glorified to, to work, you know, be working incessantly. And it's not always a good thing. It's great when you have things you want to achieve um and you know we all we all do it sometimes but i think it needs to be balanced with um with taking care of yourself and slowing down sometimes so i would say just my biggest piece of advice would be just to build in that time to your schedule as well i agree completely it's very important when i first started as an illustrator i would take off sundays i'm like god can i do that take a day yeah. off and it was really hard, but I did. And then I, I took off Saturdays as well. And I found that when you know you don't have the weekend, you get the work done during the week. Mm -hmm. And now I take a vacation week every other month. And I come back so refreshed and so rare and to get back to work because I love my work. But to prevent burnout, stress, um, to sort of detox, it's really important because I, I'm intense. I know that. So I know when I'm back at work, I will give a lot and I need breaks. Um, I also build in this and that. I try to build in things. It's important. And then also, if you build in breaks and you know you're going to have a break, then you know, okay, I really only have these three days to do X or whatever. So, you know, you know when your, your time is uh, for doing the work. Okay, let's see. Uh, Harpreet says, when did you know th that this is what you wanted to do? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it's funny, I sort of fell into it, actually. Like I didn't, it wasn't like I set out to be a children's book illustrator, um, mm -hmm. but art was always something I did from, you know, I was always the kid sketching in the corner, um, mm -hmm. and going to art classes since I was, you know, age six. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was always, always part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, it's not something I really pursued uh, in college, because I didn't know how to make a living as an artist. So, you know, I did graphic design, and I did sort of this safer, creative things. Um, but then I had this graphic design job I wasn't that happy with. And so I was always just sort of looking for something else. And mm -hmm. I saw an ad in the paper, so dating myself there, but uh, I saw an ad for someone to illustrate a children's book. I was like, oh, okay, that could be kind of fun. And they asked to send in some samples and I had done, I had worked previously at um, this animation company and we had, I had done a series of, 
uh, illustrations for them. And I had this one illustration of um, Big Ben in London and I'd sent that in and it just so happened that the book was about Big Ben. So I got the job. Wow. The first, Magic. first book I ever illustrated, knew nothing about illustrating children's books, illustrated it with colored pencil, which um, is, you know, doesn't it, reproduce well in the old days. Yeah, it wasn't great, and also just really hard to make changes or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. so that those are my very humble beginnings. But after that project, I was like, you know, I really, I really like this. I'm gonna learn more about this, and so I started. I started learning. I joined SCBWI. I got portfolio reviews. I learned, you know, about what you had to show in your portfolio. Um, and then I started sending my folio out and started getting work that way. So it was really something I, I came to sort of by accident, but, um, but I fell in love with it right away. So. Fantastic. Passion. I'm hearing passion. Okay. Um, I'll answer this one. Denise Gallagher says, can an illustrator have one agent for the book industry and a separate agent for commercial work? Well, um, Denise, uh, book is commercial work we every agents are different however um we handle everything for example because if we're promoting the artist and we have clients in every different category market product type we're promoting and promoting so we might get them a picture book we might get them a card line we might get them um murals in taiwan you know there's just it really var varies so we don't limit i don't know and kim do you i know some agents are just for picture book some are just literary mm -hmm. um i don't know does anyone here have one of each I don't know of I don't know of it. I don't think it's really common. So that's your answer to that, Denise. Hope that helps. Um, let's see. Uh, Nancy Salas, how do you decide what size illustration to start with? Do you know if it'll be landscape or portrait? Well, the client is going to tell you the format of the magazine of the book. So there's that. I I just want to get through the some of these shorter ones. Andrea, what are your favorite mediums for your illustrations? Um, so currently the way I work is I create watercolor textures all by hand. And then I also create um, hand carved stamps as I was talking about before. And then I scan all those in and I put them all together in mm -hmm. Photoshop. Um, so I sort of really layer things up and, um, and have fun that way. Yeah, that's great. I think so many illustrators do that. They'll work traditionally, make some stuff on paper, scan it in, and then work digitally or work entirely digitally, digitally yeah. on Procreate. It's a, it's a nice way to work. I used to work completely traditionally. So I used mm -hmm. to like paint a painting and that was the illustration for the book, um, which was great. And I, I loved it and I love painting and, and doing traditional work, but um, I just found I couldn't get the color control I wanted all the time. So this sort of enables me to have the best of both worlds, I feel. it's great. Okay, Ginger says, did you propose the book to Scholastic or did they suggest it after seeing the image you sent? Um, so I had worked with Scholastic before and they are on my newsletter list. So I have a newsletter that I send out every month or two, something like that. Uh, so I had included the image of the boy on the whale in one of my newsletters and they saw that and they um, they thought it would fit well for this book. That and I'm that having. was before you got representation with us. It was like, it was crazy timing. It was like three weeks, three or four weeks before I got, before you offered me representation. So within about a month span, all of a sudden. Boom. <laughs> Your book and an agent. <laughs> it happens, and sometimes things just don't happen until the time is right. Right. Yeah. You know, um, like it would not have been good if we took you on four years ago when you started as an agent. You needed to get 
that really under your belt and feel very, very fluid with that. Okay, Gemma Skidmore, your, your co-host, mm -hmm. if you could re-illustrate any classic children's book, what would it be? Wow, um, that's such a great question. Um, While she's thinking, don't forget, we have a giveaway coming up in just a minute. Yeah. I would have to say, um, it sort of the classic of classics. I would love to do Red Riding Hood. I feel like it's just, um, it's just got, you know, that little bit of evil that you don't always see in picture books these days. And it's like the, the classic good versus evil. It's got an animal and kids. It's sort of got everything in it. And, you know, as I showed with the, um, my illustrations I've done for it already, like the palettes, you can play with that red, you know, that really bright red. I just find so fun to play with against mm -hmm. colors. You so. should do something with that. That's yeah. a great idea in your spare time. Barb Delaney asks, what are your favorite art materials? Paint, markers, paper, etc." cetera. Um, so as I said, I tend to go for watercolors. That's sort of my go-to. I do actually really like, you know, if I'm just playing, if I'm not doing an illustration, for something. Um, I really love cut paper, actually. So I love sort of sort of the traditional uh, version of what I do for my illustrations. So creating textures, but then cutting them up and collaging them and then maybe drawing on top of them with them. Um, I love Posca markers as well. They're really fun. And they're so bright. Um, so I love I love their colors. Yeah, students love those. Um, Karen, London is my answer for the giveaway. <laughs> We didn't start it yet. Just, mm -hmm. she's just Angela says, when you get the book title, how do you know what to paint? How do you get inspiration? Well, she gets the whole manuscript and reads the manuscript, not just the title. Okay. And now we can do the giveaway. Kim, you want to yes. put on your Kim producer hat and tell people how it works and what they get. I'll show you what I'm giving away for. So it's two of my books. Um, these are oldies but goodies. Um, this one was published, actually they're both published in Australia um, where I, I lived for uh, many years and where I started my children's book illustration career. So that's why it's it's mummy, mummy instead of um, mommy. So mummy, you're special to me. This was um, for Scholastic. This is probably my favorite book to illustrate ever. And then this book, Feathers. Mm -hmm. um, which uh, actually just won an award in Australia. So um, very fantastic. Cool. What is that about? Um, so this is a really special book. It's actually about grief. Um, it's about this little little boy who has lost his mom and um, these feathers sort of become a symbol of her. And he sort of follows these feathers all through the book. And then at the end, this is these are this is my favorite spread. Um, he like he sees his mom in, oh, um, in his dreams, and they um, and then when he wakes up, there's a there's a feather on his pillow, um, and throughout the book, there's this bird that follows him around in every. Uh, spread. So it's a really it's a really special book. Um, that's very important. Yeah. Very important. Beautiful. Okay, so those books are in the giveaway. So what happens next? Okay, so what happens next is um, Lilla and I have thought of a very special thing, which we will tell you the category for in a moment. And you can guess uh, by typing into the chat. You can guess however many times you like. And once we see the answer, we will stop you. It may not be the first, first correct answer. It's just the one that we see because the chat goes super fast. Um, so, uh, so you just have to bear with us and, um, you get what you get and you don't get upset, right, Lilla? You get what you get and you don't get upset. That's right. Okay. Is everybody ready? Type ready if you're ready. And you might want to do, make sure you're said to everyone, not just hosts and panelists. Doesn't really matter, but then everybody can see your guests, not just us. Okay. The category is... Kim? An animal. Boom. All right. Oh, I saw it already. Right. <laughs> oh, that was easy. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, it was Harpreet Sani, who asked ah. a question before as well. So congratulations, Harpreet. So you can email me, you can, well, you can email Agent Kim, I'm Artist Kim, but you can email Agent Kim and I'll um, organize to get that sent out to you. So it's Kim, K-I-M, at lillarogers.com. Mm -hmm. And say that you won this. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, the, the, animal, the animal was giraffe. Oh, right, right. <laughs> the animal was giraffe. And be, yeah, be sure to just say uh, that you won in the, the Kim webinar. Oh, this is wonderful. This has been really a pleasure. And I got to know you even better. <laughs> it's fun. We get to hang out and just, you know, chillax. Very nice. So a couple things, everybody. Um, if you're not in boot camp, that's my assignment class, assignment portfolio assignment boot camp or boot camp assignment portfolio <laughs> or whatever it is, three of those words. And um, the assignment it just came out yesterday for the this month and it's three months long and and it's it's the next month is a particularly powerful month that i think you will all really like um so i do hope to see you there and riley and i are doing a review in toy class this friday is that right riley i think so right kim so do sign up for that. It's self-paced and you can work on your kid book, uh, your, your toy pitches uh, for that. And then at the end of the month is the Margot class. I teach with Margot Tanto, creative director on home decor. That's a popular favorite. The more diversity you have in your portfolio, the more likelihood you have of being very busy you get a home decor line, you get a toy pitch, a toy uh, to create, you get a picture book and so forth. The more you have um, in imagery for different markets, the, the likelihood you will have a more lucrative career. Fr Riley says, yes, Friday review, the self-paced course is open and ready for new students. Yeah, and then Riley's gonna pick somebody and do a one-on-one -on -one hour long uh private zoom with one person from class on on their career their work any pitch they have whatever you want so that is pretty worth it exclusive yeah mm -hmm. can't buy that money can't buy that so there's that well thank you everyone it's been a real pleasure and we hope to see you at our next things Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for showing up today. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Kim. Bye.